So you're working from a home a lot, sitting at a desk in front of your computer, and you notice that you're fidgeting and it's difficult to get comfortable. More and more people are working from home or just spending more time on their computer. So we're doing a little series that we're calling Work From Home Solutions, and we plan to review a chair, a desk, and a treadmill that we found through our personal use has been very effective, comfortable, and we feel is worth looking at. So for this segment of Working From Home Solutions, we're going to be looking at the Lifespan DT3 BT Desk Treadmill. So you're probably asking yourself, why a desk treadmill? Why would someone like myself, who's had a working treadmill for 20 years, works great still, a little loud albeit, but it still works great, why would I go out and spend $1,000 on another treadmill? Well, if you're like me, you're probably to the point in your life where there just aren't enough hours in the day. I like to spend an hour on my treadmill a day. Sometimes I was doing two, and that was a good time to watch TV or take in the news. But now, carving out an hour to be on, just on the, exclusively on the treadmill is becoming more and more difficult. So now, I'm hoping to marry exercise and work together. So let me show you quickly how the treadmill comes. It comes fully assembled in a box just like you see here. So we just lifted the top of the box off, and there it is, fully assembled in the box, ready to go. Nice and easy to do. I don't know about you, but um, if I can avoid assembling something, I prefer to do that. The dimensions of the treadmill are 63 inches long by 28 and a half inches wide. So basic features of the Lifespan DT3 is, of course, it's designed to work at a desk. Shown here, it's a single place desk, and it does have six shock absorbing mounts. Now, this is important. I don't know if you've ever worked with a treadmill, say, in a, a gym or something where they're very firm. If you're on a treadmill for 45 minutes or an hour, the more rigid the deck, the more tired you are. And if you're prone to shin, shin splints, you definitely want to have something softer. I will say, after years of having an entire deck that absorbed the motion, which is more rare these days, even the six shock absorbing mounts were not quite enough. It took some getting used to, but it still is better than having nothing. One of the really nice things about this particular model is it actually counts the steps every time you take them. So it's not just kind of pacing out. Every time your foot drops, it registers a step. <clears throat> now, one of the things that it does say in the manual is that someone under 100 pounds, it's not as accurate as registering the step, but most people probably um, break that ceiling. Um, I wouldn't recommend using the same shoes as this gentleman for using your treadmill. In this photo, you can see the controller situated on the desk, and it kind of gives you a little bit of a scaling reference here. You can see the keyboard. That's a standard keyboard. And there's the controller next to it. Here it is a little closer up. Um, this controller feels very solid, very heavy. Um, it needs to be. It has good feet on the bottom of them and that tend to be tactile that are going to stick to your desk. Because if you look at the front of that controller, that's where your breakaway key is. And so it's very important that that controller does anchor well and sit well on your desk. And it is a very light breakaway key so that if you do fall or have an emergency, that key comes out immediately and turns off the treadmill. And it does work quite well. Another really nice feature for this particular model is it has rollers. So you can slide it out away from your desk and slide it back in for use. Now this particular desk here, if he's sliding it away, either he likes to stand at his desk all the time or he has a high-low desk. Here's the controller shown at a close-up. You see it's a very basic, easy-to-use treadmill. I like that. You have your on and off, your mode. With your mode you can cycle through putting in your weight and um, while you're running it you can actually look at calories, steps, length of time. You have a stop or a pause and your up and out, down arrow key for making controls. So I'd like to go over some of the features that the um, unit offers. First of all you can put it into a program mode and change some of the basic features of it. To do this, it's not straightforward. You do have to hold two buttons down. It's covered in the manual. 
and it'll give you the codes that you're going to want to scroll through. You simply depress the stop, pause, and up arrow key. That'll get you into the programming mode. And what you can do is you can change, for instance, your units of measurement. You can go with metric or imperial. Another thing that you can do is you can set the maximum speed limit on this. Now, because it's a desk treadmill, the top speed for this particular model is four miles per hour. Believe me, if you're trying to type and look at a screen and be on your phone and do conduct you know, regular business, four miles per hour is pushing it. So you can limit it to either two miles per hour or four miles per hour once you're in the program mode. Another thing that it has is something called IntelliGuard. And what this does is if for some reason you want to pause or take a break and you step off of the treadmill, you know, sometimes you'll just jump up on the side rails, break for a minute. After 20 seconds, if you're not on the treadmill, the unit will sound an audible alarm and it'll pause. When you're ready to resume, simply step back onto the treadmill and push the button and it'll start right back up. Now the default setting for starting up on this unit is 0.4 miles per hour. So if, when you start the unit up initially, or if you resume from pause, it's going to start at 0.4 miles per hour. But there is also another programming feature called resume speed. And if you turn it on, what it will do is it will remember the last speed that the unit was traveling at before you press pause. When you depress start again, it will come back up at the speed that you left off at. So if you were, say, walking at 2.5 miles per hour, you press pause. With the resume speed function activated, when you press start up again, it'll return to two and a half miles per hour. The last programmable feature is the audible safety beep. You can turn it on or off. Now, I did see someone else's review. It is a rather loud beep, and I guess if you're in an environment where there are others sharing co-space or whatever, and you're working on your headset so you don't hear everybody else, but they hear what you're doing, you might want to turn that audible safety beep off. And you can do that also when you're in the programming mode. There's one final feature of the DT3BT. I'm assuming that DT stands for desktop, and BT means Bluetooth. However, I'm at a loss to see where that is or how it works. In the manual, it says that you can push the Bluetooth button, which is at the far left of the control module, and assuming that you've signed into and created the um, Lifespan Club Online, you can sync your results up and save them daily. You have to, according to the manual, purchase an additional Bluetooth adapter. So I went online and looked for this Bluetooth adapter and I couldn't find it. Um, so just for the heck of it, because we are kind of in a troubling time, it's difficult to get a hold of Lifespan, I went ahead and tried to create a Lifespan Club online account so I could see what that's all about. When I went to the Lifespan website and looked for the Lifespan Club account, I got a message that said it was discontinued March 31st of this year. So in the process of looking on the internet for more information, I discovered that there's a newer app, the Lifespan app, that was last updated April 19th, 2019. I downloaded that on my Android phone, and to my dismay, I couldn't get that to work either. I did find a more current version of the manual, but what I discovered is they had written out all of the instructions how to use the Bluetooth function. They put in some little jargon about the Bluetooth is there for playing media devices. Now I'm not quite sure how I'm going to integrate my media device with this controller since it has no speakers or pads or any way to control it. So again, I went out to Lifespan and I emailed them and I requested for information. What am I supposed to do? How do I do this? And guess what I got? So far it's been very disappointing not to hear back from them. I don't know about you, but when I purchase a product, service is very important, and I at least expected some kind of email response. If we do get something, we will put it down below, but at this point it looks like Lifespan had a great idea and they just weren't able to make it work. There are other units out there that do allow you to sync up to apps to record your daily results. If this is important to you, this unit is not for you. 
However, if you're looking for a unit that is whisper quiet and does have a proven track record for endurance and something that's simple to operate, I absolutely recommend this unit. So in the photos I showed before, the treadmill is shown at a single place desk where simply when you're at the treadmill, there's nowhere else to be. So you either remove the treadmill or you're on top of the treadmill when you're using the desk. Those desks also look like they were probably fixed at a raised height. Those desks are the least expensive to purchase. And by the way, that doesn't mean that they are inexpensive, but they are the most reasonable to buy. So if you decide to go with something like that, single place desk, your treadmill is going to stay there all the time, then you might want to look at something like this. These chairs are designed, or stools, are designed to be used on the treadmill. So you don't have to move the treadmill. They can be situated comfortably on the treadmill while you're at the desk. They have rounded, soft bases, which allow you to sit on the treadmill and since if there is a slight incline, vary your angle so that it's comfortable. Here you see the two different heights for the stools. This particular stool is offered by Fully, and they do have it in different colors as shown here. And here's an example of this woman sitting at her desk. Now she's not on a treadmill, but see how she's able to rock on the stool? This is nice for not only comfort, but of course making it practical to get the right angle while you're on the treadmill. Thank you for watching this far. Stay tuned where I will show you the treadmill in my work area and I will share some suggestions and tips based upon my personal experience. So we're up at my work area in the studio and before I step away and kind of show you my work area to give you some perspective of a two place um, desk where I can have my treadmill and also as my seating area, I'd like to take a few minutes and talk about a few other things. First of all, I'd like to talk about what I recommend for shoes when you're using a treadmill. This again is my personal preference, but I recommend that you use an exclusive pair of shoes only for when you treadmill. And the reason for that, if you look at um, studies, they show, especially if you live in an area with concrete, concrete adheres to the bottom of your shoes and it creates microscopic razor sharp edges that cut carpeting and also wear your tread belt um, down prematurely. I prefer personally to use white sole tennis shoes. I guess it really doesn't matter. The key is just use these shoes for treadmilling. One last point before I step away, show you my work area and get up on the treadmill. In the previous portion of the video, I mentioned that I wasn't able to get the treadmill to sync up to the Lifespan app that I have installed on an Android phone. Since the making of that video, I have had success, but I haven't done it enough to feel comfortable to actually claim that it's reliable. But what I will do is I will show you the procedure that I used that made it work for me, since the directions, well, they're virtually nil. I also want to say that I haven't been able to reach Lifespan on the phone, and we still don't have a response to the email I sent. I also will want to mention that we are during the middle of the COVID pandemic, so that could have some, something to do with it. Please look down below and see if we were able ever to get a hold of Lifespan. If we did and we have anything different to report to you, we'll put it below in the text. Okay, so my work area. Now I wanted to point this out to you because in the previous video and the pictures that we have, they all show just a single workstation where the treadmill is at a workstation only wide enough to have or accommodate the treadmill. What we have here though is I have a side by side where I can move back and forth, simply raise or lower my desk here, my fully standing desk, and uh, work on either side. Now when we purchased these desks I wasn't sure if I had planned or would be using the treadmill so I went with a 60 inch wide desk and you can see that it's kind of tight in here and if I had it to do over again or if you're making a purchase and you plan to use a treadmill I would recommend going with 72 inches as opposed to 60. And you might just notice in the shot maybe you can barely see it down here is my glass uh, chair mat which I plan to cover in another review. Over there is the fully filing cabinet which we plan to review. Great because it can hold or have 
350 pounds set on it. You can put a cushion on it. If you have a small area, you need a seat. It functions well for that. Also, this nice desk lamp. These articulating arms. We'll be covering those in future work from home solution series as well. Okay, so I'm on the treadmill right now. Um, earlier in my review, I did mention the USB port on the back. I was not able to show that to you. I'm just going to go and go ahead and put that around and move my arm. There is a USB port back there. And we can just zoom in on it. There we go. There it is. There's our USB port. I'm going to go ahead and place the controller up like this. And we can just watch it go through its sequences. I'm going to show it as it scrolls through the various values. When you put it into pause, it goes through four different values. It's going to start at the top, 2 hours and 17 minutes. Step level, that's actually 12,720 steps at a zero at the end, 528 calories, and the distance is 4.01 miles. So when I did my workout today, I wore my Samsung G3 watch, which I sync to the Samsung Life Health app. So I just want to show you something here. This is where the value of this treadmill really is nice because it's counting steps as you do it. So go ahead and zoom in on this. My Samsung G3 watch recorded 10,973 steps. Now, when you're working at the desk and you're typing and your arms aren't moving a lot of the time, or on the phone or the various things that you do that don't allow your arms to swing you're not going to get the accurate count of something that's actually counting your steps in this case it's almost exactly 2000 steps off that's a huge difference and that's where this desk if you spend a lot of time working at your desk is going to give you a much more accurate accounting of your workout so next I'm going to go ahead and show you actually starting up the machine. First of all, I'll position everything the way I do it. I'm going to start up the machine and run through so you can see how quiet it is, how it cycles through the various things, and then, and most importantly, I've only been able to make the syncing work from when the machine is on, and I will show you how I'm able to successfully sync the Lifespan to the Lifespan app. Okay, last before I start up the machine, I'm just going to bring my keyboard over here and place it as I normally do when I'm working. I place it right over the top of the breakaway key. This breakaway key is very sensitive. There is no issues with this running under the keyboard as I've done here. It breaks away quite easily. So the other thing I'll mention is I don't have it here today. I'm sorry, but I have found that one of those gel wrist rests really helps with the comfort. I wasn't able to get comfor comfortable without it. Um, so I would just would recommend a nice gel rest right there that has everything comfortable and as you can see right here everything's positioned for good typing. Now I'm going to start the machine which I simply do by depressing the start button. It's going to give me a three second countdown and it'll start at 0.4 miles per hour just as it's doing now. As it comes up to 0.4 miles per hour I can go ahead and use these arrow keys and bring it up to where I'm working at right now, which is 1.8 miles per hour. Now remember, this will go up to 4 miles per hour, but I think you'll be hard pressed to really work for any length of period of time, intricate mouse work, without um, staying under 2 miles per hour. I want you to hear how quiet the machine is. I'll stop talking for a moment. What you should be hearing mostly is the sound of my feet. And of course, each time I step, the machine is going to add another count. Why don't you go ahead and zoom in, and I'll show how this is accomplished. As I scroll through, I'll go to step level. Now, remember, because it's now counting in series of 10, since we have a zero on the end out there, it's only going to change every 10 steps. Calories, 533. Distance, 4.04 miles. And of course, my speed of 1.8 miles per hour. Now, if I pause the machine, it comes to a nice gradual stop. And if I start again, by pressing the start, again a countdown 
and 0.4 miles per hour is where it will start. Now remember there is a feature if you want where you can program it to start where you left off when you press the pause button. I'll bring it back up to 1.8 miles per hour. I'm going to run it a little faster just so you can hear how quiet the machine is. Two point five miles per hour. I'm walking in a fairly good clip, and again, really all you hear are my feet. The last thing I'm going to show you is how I've successfully been able to link or sync the Lifespan treadmill to the Lifespan app. So the first thing that's really important is you have to have the Lifespan app open. This is really key. Okay. Now it'll bring up this message. Yeah, that we don't want to do that that you don't uh, need to see it in your Bluetooth, blah, blah, blah. Just click OK. All right. Very important. The treadmill is running when you do this. I'm getting ready to stop. I'll bring this down. There's my step level. 1302 or 13,000 and now 30 steps. Now, what I'm going to do is press the stop pause button then the Bluetooth button and hold my phone next to the unit or the controller with the Lifespan app open. Stop pause, Bluetooth, hold it next to it. Start syncing the device. There it is. It's recorded 13,570 steps. That's the way I've been able to get it to work and I will continue to use it and report back in maybe a month or so if I find that it's still or at least proves to be somewhat reliable. Thank you for watching our review of the Lifespan Desk Treadmill. If you like what we're doing, don't forget to like, subscribe, and if you want to be notified of future videos, please click that notification bell. And also, if we hear anything further from Lifespan, we will include it in the notes. Thank you very much. If you're like me, there just aren't enough days in the... <laughs> hours in the day. <laughs>
All right. Thank you for watching our full review. Thank you for watching our fully desk treadable. Oh, Lord. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm over 12 hours right now, so I'm probably getting a little mush mouth. Yeah, probably. Okay, here we go. Thank you for watching our fully treadmill desk review in its entirety. If you like what we're doing, don't forget to like, subscribe, and if you want to be notified of our future releases, check that little notification bell. And one last thing, if we get anything further from Foley, we will include it in the notes below as well. Sort of. Do you feel comfortable with that? No. Okay. Another time. Okay. Thank you for watching our. Well, let's do the animated thing. Wee hee! Woo! Yeah, honk, 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 honk. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, Friday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, you ready? Yep. Thank you for watching our stand up desk treadmill mirage collage. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go again. Yes. Is he in the video? We just no, hear we just uh, we just hear his pappy feet. Yeah, every once in a while. Yeah, okay. Thank you for watching our full review of the fully treadmill desk desk treadmill. Ready? Thank you for liking our full review of the fully desk treadmill. And also, if we hear from fully or lifespan rather, the dog gone it. <laughs> <laughs> Can we patch from there? Thank you for watching our review of the Lifespan Desk Treadmill. If you like what we're doing, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and if you want to be notified of future...